Welcome back to the course in nuclear medicine physics. Today we're looking at a classic type of radiation detector known as the scintillation detector. Now a scintillator is a very interesting type of material. When you bombard it with photons or a type of radiation, what you do is you excite electrons in the lattice of a crystal, the scintillation crystal. And when these electrons decay, they emit light. And it actually emits light in the visible part of the spectrum. So you have your crystal, radiation enters it, and light gets emitted. And if you can find a way to amplify this light and turn it into a measurable electrical current, then you have a way of measuring radiation. These types of crystals are used in all types of medical imaging, such as PET and SPECT, and we'll get to that later in the course. Anyways, enjoy. All right, so today's lecture, we will be specially focusing on scintillation detectors um, as used in nuclear medicine. I do want to emphasize again, as I mentioned um, on the lecture we had on radio pharmaceuticals that I really wanna especially acknowledge Dr. Stuart Jackson for uh, gracious sharing of many slides that, that we have used uh, in, in this course. Um, he was a fantastic colleague that uh, especially instructed our radiology residents for many years. Um, so let's talk, let's get into this. So scintillation crystals we're gonna talk about today you know, historically, there's been a lot of focus on sodium iodide, uh, which has been uh, doped with thallium. Um, and we're gonna talk about other scintillators too, but you can sort of see the essence of it here that um, the scintillation crystal is, is encased essentially. Um, and the encasing helps protect it, it from environmental factors, which in this case is, is, is humidity. Thermal stress is also a problem for large crystals. And the sides are coated with reflective materials, such as magnesium oxide. And the idea is, you know, because, and you will see and learn about this more, as, as scintillation photons are generated, you really want them to all move in this direction and end up being detected in the PMT, uh, photomultiplier two, which will amplify the signal and change the signal fr from, you know, light to electrical signal, which allows our um, uh, system to, to, to process. So to do that, this reflective material helps guide these um, photons that are generated this way. Um, again, we're gonna learn, learn about this more. And the optical window here is coupled to the uh, photomultiplier uh, tube uh, using optical grease. So again, just sort of matching. Let me bring up the chat in case you guys are gonna have questions. We'll try to answer some of the questions at least. As, as, and so feel free to ask questions, make comments, and Carlos and myself will try to answer. Uh, so scintillators um, are essentially trying to process incoming gamma rays. So the incoming gamma ray, which is highly energetic, as we learned for technetium, we're looking at 140 keV, uh, for example, uh, they lose their energy in the scintillator. So they're sort of essentially absorbed by it in some sense. And this happens either through the photo photoelectric effect or Compton, or if the incoming energy is very, very high, which is not applicable for technetium because we learned last time from Carlos that if, if the, the, the energy has to be more than two times 5, 511 keV for pair production to also be a factor. So at our energies, we're dealing with either the photoelectric or Compton mechanisms um, to absorb um, the energy, the incoming energy. And so the electrons that are generated in, in this phenomena end up actually, so it's a complicated mechanism how these things work, but the electrons that are generated themselves create excitations in the molecules. So we learned about atomic excitations. You guys have a very good intuition of that. And the sort of characteristic X-rays, for example, that happen. This is kind of analogous to that, except here, it's not the atoms that are excited, but molecules. And molecular excitation is a complicated field, uh, but it's sort of analogous to that, that the molecule enters an excited state and then, when it reaches that excited state, when it descends back to its ground state, it emits photons, kind of like what you saw in, again, in, in, in atomic excitation. 
And so, so when it returns to its ground state, it emits photons. And these photons, in the case of scintillators, are often in the, in the visible range. Um, so you could get like blue light coming out, right? Uh, and so, 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 so uh, the scintillation mater material actually glows. And the amount of glowing turns out to be proportional to the energy that was deposited in the crystal. So again, remember, you've got gamma rays coming in. Those end up exciting ultimately the scintillation molecules. They come back down. They release a lot of photons in the visible range, typically in the visible range. And the amount of that glow is proportional to the original signal. So let's learn more about this. Um, so there are a number of properties of a scintillator that are very important. One is stopping power. Obviously, you've got to find a way to stop that highly energetic photon that's coming in, like 140 keV, or in the case of PET imaging for positron annihilation and emission, it's 511 keV. So the material has to be dense. And, and so the density and the effective atomic number of a scintillator really determine its ability to use photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering to attenuate the photons. The decay time is very important. The shorter decay time that allows higher count rates to be processed because you know if it takes forever for this excitation and then returning back to the ground you know, process to take place, then it takes so much time to process this first event that has come in. So the next event sort of won't be processed properly. So we're gonna have a high dead time. So, so um, and we're gonna talk about dead time in the future, but decay time is important. You want these scintillators to be fast. You know, to quickly excite so we know when the event is arriving and 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 you know that that and the decay time reduces you know the, the smaller the decay time the smaller the dead time linearity is important so the amount of um, scintillator light produced should be proportional uh, to the energy deposited uh, by the radiation conversion efficiency is very important when you stop it's great to stop the light, the gamma ray, but then you got to convert that to the scintillation for light, scintillation photons. And so the fraction of the radiation energy converted to detectable scintillator light. And so this is very important. So this is also referred to as photon yield. And also the spectral distribution for good detection efficiency, um, you're going to have light at the wavelengths that are effectively detected by PMTs. And um, so, so just to sort of uh, look at energy resolution, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, imagine this is the, you know, let's say this is 140 keV right here for technetium. Um, ideally, you want this um, energy resolution to be very, very good, very small, full, full width at half maximum, which can be written like this, and it can be also expressed as a percentage. Um, so again, we're going to talk about this more. But just to sort of show you guys um, some examples um, of different scintillators. So this is sodium iodide that we mentioned that has been historically used a, a lot in nuclear medicine. Uh, and these are examples of scintillators that have been used in PET imaging. And you'll see in a second why. So again, look at the density and the effective Z or Z, which really combined these two really determine what is the attenuation of the material. You know, what is the ultimate stopping power? Now, the stopping power I show here for 511 keV, just to provide a fair comparison between these. Um, and you sort of see these three materials, and especially LSO has been, been used increasingly in PET imaging, you see it's far more dense and therefore you see that the stopping power, the attenuation coefficient is quite higher than sodium iodide. So this is why people have been using this. This is one reason why people have been using this for PET because in PET you've got really highly energetic photons coming in 511 keV and sodium iodide, even though originally people started using this for PET, but then almost everyone switched to things like BGO, LSO just because they had better stopping power. However, sodium iodide has great conversion efficiency. In fact, its conversion efficiency is so good that it is used as a reference. We call that a hundred. That's a, it's a reference. Uh, the actual number is, you know, the photon yield or the conversion efficiency is for sodium iodide is 40 scintillation photons emitted for every keV. So if you're doing 140 keV, so it's going to be 140 times 40. So you've got something like, you know, 6,000 
um, five, 6,000 uh, individual uh, scintillation photons emitted for a single gamma ray that has come in. Um, also notice the energy resolutions. So you see that, you know, BGO is not the best. Another reason why people have switched to LSO from BGO. This number it might be a bit misleading because it is being reported for 511 KV in this table. I, I did that so that it's a fair comparison, but in practice, again, sodium ida is not used for 511 KV. It's used for lower energies, let's say 140 KV. So it turns out this number is more like 12% at that. And we're gonna talk about this more too. And look at the decay times. Again, another reason people for, for PET have switched from, three, from BGO to LSO is just because LSO is, uh, is quite faster. So LSO is not denser, it's not really denser. It's almost the same. In fact, as you, because it's effective Z is a bit lower than BGO, it's ultimately it's stopping power is a bit lower than BGO, but it is quite faster as you can see here and better energy resolution. Um, I talked about how humidity impacts uh, certain crystals. Of, of these four, only sodium iodide is impacted by humidity, i.e. is hygroscopic. Uh, and historically, there were other crystals like these two here, cesium fluoride, barium fluoride. They were, um, uh, they were um, very fast, but their stopping power was not good. So originally people liked to use them, but then people stopped using them and they started switching to things like, you know, let's say to other ones that were quite more effective. And the wavelengths of the light coming out is in the optical uh, range in the visible range. And um, so that's the question there. So here are some, some uh, and we'll see more of that. So here are some questions. Again, uh, please go through these exercises um, and make sure you're able to, to answer these questions. Um, and um, if, if, and in, in one, of, one of our practice sessions that we're gonna do, let's say before the midterm and also the finals, if you guys have questions here that you, you haven't been able to answer, bring that to the class. And of course, you can share on Teams too, and we can discuss more. So here's a poll. Give two reasons why LSO can be preferred over BGO for PET imaging. So, um, so is it A, better gamma absorption and faster decay? Is it better photon yield and faster decay? Better conversion efficiency and stopping power? Or better energy resolution and stopping power? Think about it. Answers are coming in. And again, historically, people were so tremendously excited by BGO uh, for PET, and it used to be um, the core scintillator used for PET, but then people have gradually switched over to things like LSO or LYSO, which, which has very similar properties as LSO. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so let's look at the results. Yeah, so, so most of you are saying B and that is correct. And here's the reason. As I briefly showed there, actually the stopping power, which is like the gamma absorption of LSO, in fact, is slightly less than BGO. So it's not because of that. So in that sense, they're almost comparable. In fact, LSO is slightly lower in stopping power. So the, it doesn't have better gamma absorption or stopping power. So that eliminates A, C, and D. It's really because it has better photon yield and it is faster. So going back to this table, see how um, it is, the conversion efficiency is quite better. Look at this 75 versus 15. Um, and also it's quite faster, okay? So those are the, the main two reasons. 